I'm very upset though because I can't find. Remember, I had that ornament that sang "I want a hippopotamus for Christmas." Yes. I can't find it. Thank you, Santa. Like I don't remember ever removing it from my desk. Thank it's not you. here, which I mean, it could be here because my desk. I literally have like thirty bottles of nail polish he on my got desk. My and, letter. He's and, real. And a He's pair of clip real. On, and a pair of clip-on antlers Aww. and a whole bunch of random stuff. So it could be here somewhere. My desk is really messy, but I can't find it. And I'm very upset about that. Like all my awesome noisy hippos are t- being taken down one by one. It's a little disconcerting. Santa is real. That's all I got to say there, man. Santa, real. Really real. What? Don't look at me like that. Anyway, we have. Don't 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 be don't be grumpy because guess what? The best thing ever happened this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The best thing to ever happen anywhere ever happened this week. Mm-hmm. I saw the story mm-hmm. and I, I was the happiest I have ever been in. Well, OK, in like maybe a few days, but it was great. Shall, shall we get started? Let me get the the muse Musax. Where is it? Here we go. Each week, Catherine goes out in the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible stuff. Brings it back here for a little little bit we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You. And this week, our very first story, Tara, as I said, now you know me, and you know, you know there's something I love, among many things, and that thing, monkeys, and even better, stories about monkeys. And this week, the greatest thing in the world happened. Monkey in coat runs loose at Toronto Ikea parking lot. And you see the sad picture of the monkey there, but that's not the picture you need to see. That's the picture you need to see of the monkey right there. I, I which, every, which, um, scroll down a little bit. You'll see him. The one in the coat, the one in the coat. A monkey wearing a miniature shearling coat and diapers was collected by animal services on Sunday afternoon after shoppers spotted the animal in the parking lot of a to- to- Toronto Ikea store. The owners, who were shopping at the store at the time, come forward to claim the monkey. Uh, they said the animal was in a car in the parking lot and somehow let itself out of its crate. It's a smart monkey, he said. Um, shopper Stephanie Yim said she believed she was the per- first person to, s- to spot the monkey. It was the weirdest thing, she said. I thought I was going insane. Um, she said the monkey didn't appear to be scared. It did cry out at times. It would qu- start, quote, monkey screaming, Yim said. It seems like it was screaming around for someone it knew. It was sad. Now, there was another story. You have to deal with a situation like that very carefully. So that you don't shock the monkey. Tara. I had to ruin it for you. Tara. Now there was another, uh, more coverage of the, uh, more coverage of the story. And here's a better picture of the monkey right there. Just look at all. The very first line of this story written by Connor Simpson is probably the greatest line of, 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 of text ever written in the history of journalism. It is this, and I'm going to put it on the big screen so you know I'm not lying, so you know this is exactly what is written there. What looked like someone's pet monkey escaped Sunday and terrorized a Toronto Ikea, all while wearing a very stylish winter coat. A very stylish winter coat. That, my friends, is the best line in the history of journalism. It is a jaunty little coat. (laughs) It is! But the sad the sad news here, however, is you're not allowed to have these monkeys. And they uh, 
they took it away because it's illegal to have these monkeys because these monkeys don't belong with people. No. Because, yeah, you think, oh, it's a monkey, it's cute, and it's adorable, and you know when it's little, it is. But monkeys get older. When they get older, they remember they're monkeys. And if you've ever been to India, monkeys is not nice things. I've heard that they have, like, monkey street gangs in India. They will kick your ass. Yeah, I've heard that's a problem. Didn't, I actually heard there was... I forget what city it was in India, but the the mayor yeah, the, the, was that the thrown off his show. balcony by monkeys and killed. That was from one of my old. That was from the monkey episode I did. Yes, and that that didn't yeah, happen. like he was fucking assassinated by monkeys. The irony there being that he had been called for stricter laws against the monkeys. He wanted a monkey crackdown. So, mm. well, that's what happens when you piss off the monkey mafia. But yeah, that's that's just. And speaking of which, this guy told, I mean, that coat, he kind of looks like the monkey godfather a little bit <laughs> in his big old fur coat there. Can you, I, there, there was, I, I, I understand that woman said, uh, I was going insane. There's a tweet, there's a tweet on this. Uh, Matt Elliott tweeted, Christmas miracle. Um, saw a monkey in the Ikea parking lot. Yeah. That, <laughs> Yeah. Because that's not something you expect to see. All right, this next story, you know I'm not a fan of Apple, right? No. Not a big fan of Apple. Okay. But what's going to Apple wronged you in some way? Don't get me started. We'll be here all night. That's that's my show tomorrow. That's the show I do with Jason tomorrow. Oh, I okay. I was thinking, like, the fruit. No, not the fruit, sweetie. Not not the fruit. It's a really bad season at work, my yes. brain. I'm like, do I know that you have a history with apples? Like, no, are honey, you honey. No, Paris? Darling. And some bitch rolled one into a room and you started the Trojan War? What? No, darling, not not the fruit. The, the, the Max. Company. Right. Call the Max. No, the company is called Apple. Yes, but the computers are called Max. Well, the software is called Apple Maps, and this is going to be the day the Earth stood still because I actually have to side with Apple in this next story. This is from Australia. Apple Maps, quote, potentially lethal in Australia. A glitch in Apple's Maps app could potentially lead motorists to their deaths by sending them on a wrong path in the Australian wilderness the country's police have reported. Victoria law enforcement rescued several. Is there a right path in the Australian wilderness? No, because everything's going to kill you. Um, so can you really blame Apple for that? No matter where you are in the I'm, Australian wilderness, you're going to die. I'm getting there. Uh, law enforcement rescued several stranded tra travelers who were directed by the app to the middle of Murray Sunset Park instead of their intended destination in the town of Mildury. Uh, police were concerned there's no water supply within the park and temperatures can reach as high as 46 degrees Celsius, making this potentially life-threatening issue. It was 45... How is that a park? <laughs> it's... That sounds like central hell. Okay. At least five cars were misdirected and stranded in the park because of the error. Some spe travelers spent up to 24 hours without food or water. Okay. Here's the thing. People... Don't always trust the GPS. You got two things that will assist you in travel, in, in, in orienting yourself, in, in anything you're attempting to get from one point to another. Two things that will help you. Eyeballs. Yeah, I feel like an area like that doesn't look quite like a town. No! No! So when it starts to become really obvious that you are not in something that looks like a town and you are, in fact, in something that looks like a Star Trek planet. Turn around! Where there might be aliens of some sort. Maybe. And then, maybe do something else. Well, there are kind of because, you know, they got those fucking spiders and the snakes and all the fucking things that could just you're dead. 
They, they, so they pretty much film every episode of Star Trek in Australia so they wouldn't have to worry about no, actual monsters. They, but they should have. They should have. No, um, no, they filmed all of Farscape in Australia. But uh, no, the other thing here is turn around. If you're in an area, you don't know where you are. and You're starting to lose cell phone coverage. And you keep going and you still don't have cell phone. Co- turn the fuck around. Yeah. This is not Apple's fault. Just because the little talkie box tells you to go somewhere doesn't mean you do. I I have personally on many occasions had GPS attempt to murder me. I have. I I had one that it, that insisted I should go forward through the woods in a car. It was pointing me right at a tree and it was like, keep going. No. Well, did you ask for the shortest route? I had one that attempted to drive me into a lake. Hmm. It was saying there was a road there. There was no road there. Um, Apparently my video is all borked again. It's, it's better now. Hope and I were driving once and her GPS said we were flying. We were in the air and there was water underneath. It said we were flying. Don't trust the talkie box. Don't, don't fuck it. Don't trust the talkie box. No. Google Maps has never really led me wrong. No, Apple Maps, I will admit Apple Maps is a problem. But Apple, they did not, all. Apple did not almost murder these people. Stupid almost murdered these people. Sometimes you just gotta use common sense. Yes. Gosh, this doesn't look like a town. This using, looks like central hell. Oh, I should turn around. The using common sense. I smell a segue. Uh, so we've got a couple of people, gentlemen, this week attempting to evade police. And we'll, we'll start with what the, uh, the, the, oh God, Savannah, Georgia, really? The Savannah <laughs> paper dubs genius of the day. Uh, meet Michael Brandon. Felon allegedly rams stolen car into police cruiser. Oh. Michael Brandon Hall, 27, was released from prison earlier this year after serving nearly 10 years on a variety of charges. Arrested on Friday <sighs> and charged with more than a dozen crimes, at least five felonies. According to the report, Hall was driving a stolen gray Mazda when the car rammed into a police cruiser at 3 a.m. Friday near the IHOP on Victory Drive. Oh, God, I've eaten there. Authorities are already looking for the car and its occupants who were implicated in earlier disturbance involving weapons. Police say that after ramming the cruiser, Hall sped away, driving west and eastbound lanes until his headlights, uh, with his headlights off in an attempt to elude police. Don't do that. Finally lost control and rammed into a utility pole and then fled the car along with three other occupants. Police say they they saw Hall throw a gun into a yard during the foot pursuit. Uh, They caught up with him, placed him under arrest. So you just you just finished serving a dime. Uh-huh. And and you go back right back into committing all kinds of crimes cuz apparently you don't really care that you just finished serving a dime. Yeah. Uh-huh. So you steal a car cuz you need transportation to commit mm-hmm. felonies. And you apparently really really liked prison. Yep. And miss it. Because you ram that car into a fucking cop car, which is basically like putting yourself in the back seat already in the cuffs. That's like of all the fucking things you could hit. You had a smorgasbord of targets, but no, you go right for the one that's going to put your ass back in jail. Clearly, this person really well, you know, I joke like and I say that they wanted to go back to prison, but there are people that have like serious anxiety after a long sentence upon being released back into society and come to find the routine and everything of prison comforting and wind up back in because they kind of can't handle. Yeah. But what about the other three people with him in the car? Well, they weren't driving. (laughs) They were probably like, motherfucker, what are you doing? Don't hit that cop car. I'm amazed he got out of that car alive. Honestly, I'm going to hit the cop car. What? 
Hit and then the I'm going to drive against traffic with no headlights. Huh? Don't do that. The headlights. All right. What people don't seem to understand about headlights is, yes, they're there to allow you to see in the dark, but they serve another purpose to let other people fucking see you. Because if they did you did you guys ever in your area get that urban legend about how people would drive around with no headlights so that you'd flick your headlights at them and then they'd follow you home and kill you? That it was like a gang initiation and that you weren't supposed to flicker your lights to let people know that their headlights were off because then they would turn around and follow you home and murder you. It was a thing like. God, how long ago was I in college? Let's not do the math there over a decade ago. We'll just put it that way. They actually put it in the movie Urban Legend. Your, your mind is just full of darkness. Why does this always happen? What do you mean? Just eh. all right. They used it in the movie Urban Legend with Rebecca Gayhart and Alicia Vitt and and Joshua Jackson. Wow, I don't know that. Okay, have you you have you ever watched uh, Family Guy? Once or twice. Do you know the recurring bit on there, the greased up deaf guy? No. Okay, there, there's a recurring bit where they are trying to chase a greased up deaf guy. It's like a thing, it's a joke, and they never catch him. And that's a show made by Seth MacFarlane. Now, this next thing is probably the most amazing confluence ever. Now, he's not deaf, but... Naked man led officials on car chase through North Austin. Police arrested a man who led them on a car chase uh, while high on methamphetamines, naked and covered in a, quote, greasy substance. And ladies and gentlemen, look at his last <laughs> name. Allow me to introduce you to 41 year old Scott McFarland. <clears throat> Wow, Covered that's in a greasy substance. Um, according to arrest reports, police received two calls about a man sitting in a Jeep nude outside the Value Place Hotel. No, never stay at something called the Value Place Hotel. Oh, now I understand what happened here. <laughs> Second caller told police the man was either intoxicated or high on drugs. And that had been violent in the past. Uh, police arrived. They, they were told McFarland had left in the Jeep was heading into uh, high, high, high meadow. meadow. High Meadow Drive, thank you. Um, when one officer went after McFarland, he saw the Jeep coming toward the hotel, put his lights on, began to follow. According to arrest records, McFarland was initially not speeding and traffic was heavy in the area. However, he eventually reached speeds as high as 80 miles per hour and ran a red light during the lengthy chase. McFar uh, when uh, they, they finally managed to stop him, he uh, rolled the Jeep into a ditch he opened the door, but refused officer's orders to get out of the Jeep. Police heard him make a comment wondering if, quote, if it was him, police were chasing. Are you chasing me? <laughs> police pulled McFarland out of the vehicle, but had a difficult time because he was naked and, quote, covered in a greasy substance. And it was very hard to get a hold of him. Clearly, this was a kinky night of hotel sex gone awry. The Value Place Hotel. That just sounds like a place that charges by the hour. Yes, that is a value. And obviously, this was some kind of kinky sex thing gone wrong. I, I just, I... <sighs> I love the idea. Just picture in your mind, kids. The cops trying to grab hold of this naked, greased up meth fiend, and he's just slipping out of their hands. It's like, did you ever have one of those toys that it's just like a continuous tube of plastic with gel inside it? And I'm not going to make that hand motion on that. <laughs> um, and you just continually squeeze it and the gel causes it to be like this giant 
Mobius strip of it's a it's the most useless toy in the world. I don't know why it exists, but it kind of yeah, it's like that. Well, that was this. I just all in my mind. I'm here. Nobody make a gif of that. In my mind, when I'm picturing this, I'm hearing um, the Benny Hill theme. Because you, you, it, it's got because it, trying to grab hold of the, the naked man who's screaming and running. And are you after me? No. How does this become your life? I wonder. How did he not slide off the seat? Trying to drive? <laughs> How did he keep his foot on the gas pedal? How did he control the wheel? <laughs> These are questions. Was his head greased up? Because it doesn't look like it in the picture. Questions we will never know the answer to, but they, they will remain mysteries forever. Mm. So, uh, you know, in, in New Orleans, have you heard about the, the drive through margarita things? I have. Oh, my God. Every city should be required to have daiquiri shops on every corner like New Orleans. That is that is both the best idea and the worst idea. It's there is what city has <clears throat> drive through prostitution now. Amsterdam. No, it's God. What I put it up on Twitter a few weeks ago. I don't know. There's so it's in Sweden or something. I think that they have like drive up booths. For the prostitutes. Well, you were saying every city should have the drive up uh, daiquiris. This city didn't. Man asks employee for a beer after crashing into liquor store. Police arrested, arrested a rapid city man after he asked an employee at the liquor store. He had just crashed his minivan into a minivan. A minivan. How are you going to crash through shit in a minivan? That is the least badass vehicle you could possibly be driving if you're going to crash through shit. I'm sorry, but it's true. You're not cra you're not impressing anybody crashing through the front window in a minivan. I'm sorry. Like I drive a I drive a minivan. I know. But please don't drive through the front of any buildings cuz they're going to laugh at you. The only thing worse would be driving through the front of something in a smart car cuz you just bounce right off. <laughs> Around 8 p.m. Friday, Rapid City police officers tracked 55-year-old Leslie Bush to his home using the license plate number the employee gave him and took him into custody. Uh, Bush made his initial court appearance Monday morning via closed-circuit TV from the jail on charges of third offense, felony driving under the influence, driving with a revoked license, and failing to report a wreck. Uh, when, ba when Bush drove away in his minivan, he left behind a hole in the building's concrete exterior wall an aisle full of busted liquor bottles, estimated cost about twenty five hundred dollars. Uh, this guy clearly doesn't know his crashing through a building etiquette because you don't ask for a beer. You offer them pizza or well, again, the balls on this. This is this is another case of the balls on this guy. <laughs> sketch sketch 300 from the channel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> of course we had to make that joke but it's it's i mean <sighs> to to crash in there and to go hey you got any paps blue ribbon i'll take three here you go what's you know, wrong give you you're already driving pretty poorly and then to drive away and expect everyone to be cool with it is the best part well, you're not going to serve me. I'm just going home. I'll go back out the way I came. If you're going to drive through somebody's wall, you offer them pizza. It's only right. Although he did drive away. What the f you got to say, if that's a minivan, that's a badass minivan. He went yeah, that's like the fucking mystery men mobile. He went through a concrete all wall. souped up by Tom Waits and shit. <laughs> The Herc, Herc, what, what the fuck was it called? Someone in the channel will know. I don't remember. I haven't seen the that movie in a really long time. Non-lethal van. Someone knows. What of you geeks will know? Was it the mystery machine? They couldn't have done that. No, it was not the mystery machine. What of you, what are you guys is furiously looking on the internet? The Jitney. Yeah, somebody the is Herkimer Googling. Jitney. The Herkimer Battle Jitney. There you go. Oh, God, we are so sad. 
Okay. Um, the last one this week. Heart was in the right place. Head was right up his ass. Mm. Man kidnaps child to teach father a lesson for leaving son on his own. A man has stolen a car with a two-year-old boy inside because he wanted to teach the toddler's father a lesson for leaving him unattended. Please oh my God, it. this is in Connecticut. Yes. Ha ha. Police manhunt was launched after 24-year-old Devin Mills of Bristol took out took the orange Cadillac with Lewis Trinidad in the back seat from a store in Hartford. He had later emerged the boy's father, who returned from the store to find both car and child missing, had left his son in the car with the engine running. Um, <clears throat> Mills left the toddler with an acquaintance who took him to a police station, which he heard about the alert police had issued over the kidnapping. Mills then parked the car near where he had taken it and fled on foot, but was soon picked up by police. He told officers he had taken the car because he was, quote, upset with the boy's father for leaving the two-year-old alone. Child was reunited with his family after police confirmed his identity through photographs. Mills has now been charged with second-degree kidnapping, second-degree larceny, risk to a minor, and operating under suspension, which means, oh God, he didn't even have a license. This is one of those stories where congratulations, everybody's an asshole. Everyone is. No, not his, his relative, Mills relative, the one who said he went to his relatives and, she, and he said, here, hold this kid. Why? Just hold him. Let me turn on the news. Oh, shit. What have you done? Hello, police. Yes, my relative is a moron. That was the smart for everybody else. OK, where do, where do you want to start breaking this one down? Where, where is there to start? How about Don't leave your kid in an unattended car with their engine running. We learned that Black Friday. You're an asshole. Don't you wouldn't do that to a dog. Don't do that to your kid on a hot and day. If you see the that if you see a kid in an unattended car with the engine running, a sane person, a smart person stands by that car. Ask the child where the child's parent is. Maybe call 911 something. You don't kidnap that fucking kid. Like, <laughs> you're not helping that kid. You're giving that kid a traumatizing experience for the rest of his life. You are fucking up that kid forever. I have, how is this helping? This is not helping. I'm just, oh, D.A. Scott Jr. I'm going to steal money to teach people not to have so much money. Yes. Same principle. Yes. I, I Well, I mean, that was Robin Hood. Music lover 9293. Someone sleeping on the couch tonight. Oh, fuck. Yes. Someone's sleeping in jail, actually. One sleeping in jail. That's a felony. He's one sleeping in jail. But dad, the two year old's dad. Yeah, he's on the couch. He's on the <sighs> fucking couch. I don't understand why people think it's okay to just leave a toddler unattended in a car. Oh, it's just going to be a minute. I'm going to just one minute. Just one minute. Just fine. No. No. Because when they're you're small, dependent people, they need constant attention. Am I the only one who ever saw that old that old commercial? On a hot day, the inside of your car can fry a dog's brain. Am I the only one who ever saw that one? No, I saw that saw one. That one? I it's remember not that, that hot in Connecticut right now, but <laughs> still. Some lunatic who thinks he's a good Samaritan could kidnap your child. Hold on, kid. I'm teaching. Who doesn't think he's a good Samaritan could kidnap your child, and that'd be worse. Hold on, kid. I'm teaching your dad a lesson. What do you eat? Your two? What? Pizza? I will stop by Pizza Hut. Congratulations. Everybody's an asshole. Everyone is an asshole. Two words. I'll roll a cone. Oh, God. Yes. Two words. Raising Arizona. <sighs> I love that movie. Cohen Brothers. Love that. It's going to my hip one. So what have we learned this week? Um, well, obviously, we've learned two things at once. Don't leave your child in a vehicle unattended with the keys inside and don't help. Don't don't help like that. That's not helping. That's the opposite of because 
Yeah. Don't leave your monkey unattended in the car either, apparently. <laughs> Don't leave the monkey unattended because the, the, the fucking monkey. Poor monkey. I feel sorry for the monkey. Although anyone who saw the monkey that day, it was probably one of the best days at Ikea ever. See, because I have in my head because of, of my, you know, Ikea is such a weird place. I think I think if I encountered that, the first thing that would occur to me was that Ikea had started employing monkeys to stock the floor or something. I would love to I would love to see the monkey trying to put together one of those fucking bookcases like, or something. Ikea is such a surreal little place that I think I would honestly be like, wow, they're just not even using people anymore. They have monkeys stocking the floor. Damn. Um. <laughs> We, we've we, I, he had a little coat it was great best day at ikea ever it was a cute little coat okay yeah that coat that, that okay he doesn't work there that monkey's in a coat like that that monkey's the manager hmm. fat monkey in a little coat um we've learned that monkey in a little coat we've learned that just because you have a gps doesn't mean you shut off your fucking brain Yes. It's technology. Technology can fail. Pay attention to your surroundings. Do the words Three Mile Island mean anything to you? Technology can be wrong. Use your brain. Don't listen always to the talkie box. It will <laughs> lie to you. And I think some of them want to murder you. Also because the machines are going to rise really soon and they want to wipe us out and use us as batteries like in the Matrix. So don't trust them. Um, we've learned some people may be better off in jail. Or just really bad at crime. Well, we already knew some people are really bad at crime. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Um, we've learned that if you are going to attempt to flee the, the, the police... Being naked and covered in grease will actually help your chances because they have a hard time grabbing you. Who knew? Yeah, but they caught him. They did, but it had he been a little less hyped up on meth, he might have got away. <laughs> a little more sober, a little more grease. He might have made he might have made that. You should test that theory and let me know how it goes next week. No. No. Grease up the gimp suit. No. Go out and commit a misdemeanor. And finally, we learned that um, a minivan can go through a concrete wall. <clears throat> but nobody will respect you. But no one will respect you. And nobody will give you beer. Look, I drive a 2002 Buick, man. I drive a Grammy Mobile. I'm not judging. <laughs> 